Therefore, I am stressing on this book. Where is book? Where is book? Where is book? So kindly help me. This is my request. When I, when we were making these last-minute arrangements, and then I heard how many devotees were eager to come, I was very happy. And now that I'm seeing you all, I'm feeling this powerful energy. When there's a desire in the heart to do something, and one begins to act upon it, there will be many obstacles. But those who have that kind of determination will find ways to overcome the obstacles and by incremental improvement and do some wonderful service. So to orient ourselves to, this, to the mood of Sankirtan, we'll first meditate on the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. And Srila Prabhupada, of course, sang this song regularly. And he also said and recommended that we should sing it regularly. So just by hearing about the Goswamis and their daily activities and their mood, then we'll become infused with the same mood and we'll get their mercy. So we'll start with this song by Srinivasacharya. Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Paro Primam Britam Boni Di Tira Dira Jana Priyo Priyakoro Nirma Saro Pujito Chaitanya Kripa Baro Bhuvi Bhuva Parabhantara Ko Pandeiru Pasanatano Raghu Yago Shri Jiva Gopala Ko Krishna Kirtana Gana Nartana Paro Prema Amritam Boniti Dira Dira Jana Priyo Priyakaro Nirmatsaro Pujito Chaitanya Kripa Baro Bhuvi Bhuvo Varavahantara Ko Bandai Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago Shri Jiva Gopala Ko All together Nana Shasha Vichara Naika Nipuno Sadharma Sam Stapako Loka Namita Karino Tribuvane Manyo Sharanyakaro Radha Krishna Parada Vinda Bhajanda Nandena Mataliko Vande Rupa Sanatano Raghu Yago Shri Jiva Gopala Ko Goranga Gunarnu Varna Nabido Shraddha Samridyan Vito Papo Tapani Krintano Tanu Britam Govinda Gandam Anandam Budi Varda Naika Nipuno Kaivalya Nishtarako 
Bandeiru Fasanatano Raguya Go Shi Jiva Go Palako Jaktva Tur Namashesha Mandala Pati Shainin Sada Tu Chavad Bhutvadina Ganesha Ko Karunaya Ko Pina Kanta Shrito Ko Pi Bhava Rasamrita Dilahari Kalola Magno Mahu Vandero Pasanata no Raguya go, Shi Jiva go Palako, Puja go Kila Hansa Sara Sagana, Kinema Yurakule. Nana Radna Nibara Mula Vita Pa Shi Yukta Vrindavane Radha Krishna Maharni Shambra Bajato Jibata Doyo Muda Vandero Vasanata no Raguya go, Shi Jiva go Palako, Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nativi, Kalavasani Krito. Nidrahara vihara kari vijito Chatyanta di no chayo Gayanto chakadahare gunavaram Baba vibuto muda Oh, sorry. Pasanata no hakuya go, Shi Jiva go palako. Radha kundata te kalinda tanaya, Tire chavam shiva te. Premon Madhavashada Shesha Dasaya Krasto Pramato Sada Gayanto Chakadahare Gunavaram Bhavabhi Bhuto Mudha Vande Rupa Sanata no Raguya go, Shi Jiva go Palako, He Radhe Braji, Devi Ke Chalalite, He Nanda Suno Kuta. Shri Govardhana Kalpa Pada Patale Kalindi Vanye Kutaha Goshanta Viti Sarvato Vrajapure Keter Mahavivalo Vande Rupa Sanata no Raguya Go Shi Jiva Go Palako Vande Rupa Sanata no Raguya Go Shi Jiva Go Palako Vande Rupa Sanata no Raguya Go Shri Jeeva Go Palako Go Premanande
Tai Gora Hari Po Lari Bol Hari Po Tai Gora Hari Po Jai Jai Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jai Jai Prabhu Jnana Timirandasya, Jnana Anjana Shalakaya, Chakshurundalitam Dena, Tasmai Shri Gurude Namaha, Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam, Stapitam Nena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Kadahmayam, Tadati Svapadantikam, Vandeham Shri Guru. Sri Uta Parakamalam, Sri Guru Vaishnavamscha, Sri Rupa Sagrajata, Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam, Tam Sajivam, Sadvetam Sadvadhutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha. Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vrishabhadu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye, Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha, Kripa Sindhu Pyevacha, Patitanam Pavanevyo, Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha, Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhara, Shiva Sari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Go Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Is it possible for the devotees? Can they move some move up to the front? From the back, you can come up here. Is it all right? There's a lot of space up here. We fit as many as five thousand devotees in this room before. So don't move the chairs, please. Please feel free. Don't move chairs. Just everyone who's or sitting in the back, if you can't see, you Just can come, come up frame. here in this front row. At least that's my humble opinion. Thank you. There's uh, enough water in the back, and there's restrooms on the left for Mataji's and Prabhu's left side. Can I have the clicker, please? You ready? Is everyone okay? You comfortable? Okay. So, we call this the SOS, or the Sankirtan Orientation Seminar. But before I say anything, I'd like to hear from you what some of your expectations are today. What were you hoping to find out by coming all the way out here? And we have a microphone that will pass around. And please tell us. What are some of the things, you're eager, you're here, you came, you voted with your feet, so now what is it specifically that, that you're interested in hearing about? Yes. To get association of yourself. Pardon me? To get the association of the, all the Sankirtan devotees. To get association with the Sankirtan and devotees. Their experiences, how the book distribution is the most thrilling service. It is the life of Iskon. It's the life of Iskon. I like this devotee. That's why we had to move up to the front. Who else? Okay, yes. Krishna. To understand and to get some answer which is very difficult while distributing books, we face some... How to answer difficult questions. You want to learn a few comebacks. 
Okay, we'll talk about that. What else? Mataji? Hare Krishna. Just want to know how uh, I can improve the way I distribute books and to get more mercy of Srila Prabhupada. Very nice. How to improve distributing your bo uh, books and how to get mercy from Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, <laughs> Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Uh, to know the dynamics of book distribution and the way you have been doing so consistently with such a determination, dedication, so how we can inculcate in our, you know, Krishna consciousness movement so that we can distribute more and more books. Okay. Did you get that? Tell us uh, the, the sutra. Sutra is you know, the way you are determined and such dedication you are doing, Prabhuji. Okay. How so to be dedicated to get a drop of that nectar, then I think we can okay. do much better. And you'd like to hear why I've dedicated my life to it, something like that. Okay. What else? Hare Krishna. When we think of book distribution, what comes to mind is it's a hard work. Who's going to take the books in hand, in sunlight? But now I want to know instead of hard work, it should be a smart work. Like you should feel more pleasure to go. So I have come here to get that. Okay, I have a mantra for you to start with. You repeat after me. Are you ready? Yes. Book distribution. Book distribution is fun and easy. Is fun and easy. Book distribution. Book distribution is fun and easy. It's fun and easy. Now you got to use your hands too. Book distribution is fun and easy. easy. Now, when anybody asks you what the seminar was about today, you just say to them, book distribution is fun and easy, right? Don't you feel better already? Okay, what else? What is that? We got How half of that. How to overcome obstacles. How to overcome obstacles. obstacles. Okay. First, the mind itself Very is good. a big obstacle. Just to come, to come out to do the service itself is a big obstacle. Yes, it for is. For many devotees. Just to, just to walk out the door every day. Yes. The and mind then, gets some then this so competitive many spirit comes. That okay. This somebody has done better than me. So all these things are obstacles in our mind, which which will drag us behind. So this all right. thing should not come. Yeah. Well, let me just. Some of them I'm going to just answer right now because it's a little spontaneous, and I have until when? Eleven o'clock. Oh, I better hurry up. Okay. Um, I'll answer that in due course. So. Now we have a few expectations and the time is moving along, so I'm going to move along a little bit also just so we can get into this. In, in speaking about book distribution, we must mention the legacy that we are taking up. It is actually a legacy that comes from the spiritual world. The first member of our Sampradaya, Brahma, received this knowledge from Krishna, obviously. And when we say sampradaya, we, we're act, we actually mean the complete gift, that which will completely satisfy us and give us what we're looking for. And it's passed down as a gift. So, Sankirtan, and the work that we're doing actually means giving gifts. This is wonderful work. It means that we're giving others the highest possible benefit in life and open-heartedly we're going out to give preaching means giving everyone say preaching means giving, preaching means giving. started with Srila Dvaita Acharya who was praying that Sh Krishna personally would come to the world and give this gift because he saw what a lot of us are seeing now and that is that Kali Yuga is a very difficult time for spiritual life and he was feeling that compassion so he called out to Krishna over and over again and he discovered the secret offering Tulsi leaves and Ganges water but it was his heartfelt prayers that invited Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to come down and he actually advented so Krishna came to this world in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to deliver the conditioned souls then he he gave us this Sankirtan movement and really it's a simple movement there's only two parts to it 
One part is chant Hare Krishna. The other part is teach it to others. Part one is chant Hare Krishna. Part two is Part two is Part two is Part one Part one Part two Part one Chant Hare Krishna and teach others. That's what Lord Chaitanya did. He came and he chanted and danced, danced with the members of the Panchatattva. And the more they tasted it, the more it increased, and the more they gave it out to others. Now, beyond giving it out, they also started a marketplace. This idea of marketing means you have to be a little more thoughtful. It means that you're organizing something so you can get a maximum impact. You consider many aspects of your organization when you market something, what the package, what the product looks like, who are the likely candidates and so forth, and how to get it out to as many people as possible. So it's a marketing campaign we're involved in. And sh the, the target audience, every town and village. Here's Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu dancing down the streets of Miami, Florida. And that's not an unlikely scene. Uh, just 50, 60 years ago, that might have seemed impossible, but now it's actually happening all over the world. In the most unlikely places, people are chanting and dancing, and, and the Sankirtan movement is spreading to every town and village. Just after Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu left the world, as is the general trend in the material world, the, the vibration was obscured, it was lost for some time, until the great teacher Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur came and revived the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He started the marketplace. Anybody know what his position was in the scheme? He called the Namhata, which was an elaborate marketing program to spread the holy name all over. What was his position in the corporation? He was the sweeper, the sweeper of the marketplace. Servant of the servant of the servant. So at Surabhi Kunj, she declared this market reopened. And we're the beneficiaries of it. Then he prayed that a ray of Vishnu would appear in his family. This was his mentality to spread the Krishna consciousness all over the move, movement all over the world. And Srila Prabhupada once said that when, you, when you're given an impossible task, you have to pray over and over again, how can I do, how can I do, how can I do? So when we're going out to do book distribution, we may have this feeling, this is an impossible task. How am I going to do this? But we pray over and over again, just as Prabhupada did on the Jaladuta. He was saying, how will I make these people understand? It seems impossible. And that's where the excitement in Krishna consciousness is, taking this risk, living in this zone where you don't know what's going to happen next, being outside your comfort zone. In fact, I've said many times, you should feel uncomfortable when you're in your comfort zone. And you should feel comfortable when you get outside your comfort zone. And the best way is to go out and meet people because you don't know what's going to happen next. And you have to say, how can I do? How can I do? How can I do? And this was the, the mood and method of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He also had a vision. He was a visionary from the spiritual world and he knew that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement was spread all over the world. So he predicted that a great personality would appear. Meanwhile, even though the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had all but disappeared, there were still stalwart pure devotees who were keeping the pure name, the Shudanam, going. And then appeared that ray of Vishnu, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur the great Acharya, who spread the Krishna Consciousness Movement all over India. Very successful, the Gaudiya Math. And he also sent some of his followers to go to England and to Burma, and obviously had the vision to go further than India. But those envoys that went out were not successful. They came back. But then, one of the disciples of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, maybe you, you can all guess which one it was. Huh? It was Srila Prabhupada, yes. He was a householder. He didn't mix so much with all the other sannyasis and 
he felt himself unqualified and he asked his spiritual master, what can I do to help? What can I do? At Radhakund, and there's a diorama of this right up by Srila Prabhupada's room. You'll see right up the road. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur told A.C. Bhaktivedanta Abhai Charanaravinda, he said, if you ever get money, print books. He said, Prabhupada noted this fact that he was very fond of books and he got this specific instruction to print books. So he said, I took it up from his mouth, this order. And you'll notice throughout his life, he was focused on this book distribution. So Srila Prabhupada's mission then was to spread that marketplace all over the world. What a task, starting by yourself, all alone. And what did he bring with him? His Bhagavatams. I always wondered how he did that because he was alone. What did he do with all those trunks of books? I was talking to Brahmananda Prabhu before he passed away. I, was, I just finished writing a book, so I was doing a lot of interviews. I was talking to Brahmananda for hours. And he told me that when Prabhupada got to New York, the Skindia Steamship Company had its own warehouse facility right there in New York City and they, they allowed him to keep his books there for some time. So when Prabhupada got established, he had Gargamuni and Brahmananda go get those books and bring them back to the ashram and they spent time tying them up, the three volume sets, tying them with string and Prabhupada sat there chanting in very satisfied mood, watching them tie those books up. Those were the first containers of these spiritual seeds that would land on the shore. Actually, they weren't, and I'll tell you a secret. Srila Prabhupada had gone to the Library of Congress in Delhi. He was around selling his books all by himself, going here and there, all over India. He went up to northern India and to Kashmir and everywhere, to universities and anywhere else where he could sell his books. And the Library of Congress is the official library of the United States of America. They have a branch in New Delhi. Prabhupada went there to sell his books. He sold 16 sets of his first canto Srimad Bhagavatam there. And a little known fact, now the Library of Congress then dispatches those to various other libraries around the world. That's their job. So one of those sets of books ended up in New York Public Library on 2nd Avenue. One year before Srila Prabhupada arrived in America. And Brahmananda told me that Prabhupada used to take three bus transfers to go uptown for, from where he was staying to visit those books. He said that was his entertainment, to go in the library. And imagine the victory he felt that his books had landed in the most prestigious library in New York. And this is how Prabhupada thought. He knew the power of the Bhagavatam and the, the seeds, spiritual seeds contained within these books. And therefore, he could see that it was unfolding. Lord Chaitanya's mission was unfolding right before his eyes. Now, he made this pamphlet. You may have seen this before. And it's significant because he says 60 volumes. And then he says all over the world for scientific knowledge. He was alone. He was printing these by himself. And he only had the first canto in three volumes. And he's saying 60 volumes and all over the world. This was the kind of momentum that Prabhupada had as he was pushing book distribution. This is a strategy. Book distribution is a strategy to change the world. Books do change the world and Prabhupada wanted to inject the Krishna consciousness movement into the world through book distribution. And he noted that other groups had done so successfully, like the communists. Yeah? I can do one more hour? Wow, thanks just got an extra hour. Communists, he noted, were very expert at distributing their literature. And people would read it, and then the ideas would get into their minds and hearts, and lo and behold, the movement would take place. There's a history in countries all over the world of book burning. It's been done in Europe, it's been done in Asia, because people who want to take control of a government know that if people read books, it's dangerous. Because books actually change people's minds and hearts, and they form movements. People, when somebody takes the trouble to write a book, it, it has an impact on the world. And it's thoughts that are organized. So people rally around those, they galvanize, and they start movements that can actually change the world. 
and there are many instances of this. In the United States, there was a pamphlet written by Thomas Paine, who advocated that the colonists should rise up and have a revolution. And historians say to this day that it was the distribution of that pamphlet that actually galvanized the colonists to rise up and have a, a revolt against, against England. Similarly in Cuba, there was the Fidel Castro was in jail, he was imprisoned, but he, he was writing his words on paper using lime juice because it's invisible. And his wife Mirta would come and visit him in prison and she would smuggle the pages out, reconstitute them in the sun, put them together, and it formed a book called, or a, a long essay called History Will Resolve, Absolve Me, and that became <coughs> the catalyst which start, <coughs> excuse me, which began the revolution in Cuba. Has every, anyone ever heard of evolution, the theory of evolution? Yes or yes? Give me a little more enthusiasm than yes or yes. Yes, you've heard of it. Have you ever seen the book lying around called Origin of the Species? Probably not lately, right? It's where the idea came from, a book by Charles Darwin called Origin of the Species. The book's not really available right now. If you walk into an airport bookstore, you're not going to see it sitting there. But everyone all over the world accepts these ideas about evolution. Why? It came out in a book. Someone took the trouble to write a book. They organized, he organized his thoughts, he put it together, and it was distributed. Now that theory persists all over the world. The idea of capitalism also came from a book. All the ideas, all the ideologies we find around the world came from organized thought, written down, and made prevalent in society. That's what causes movements, that's what causes revolutions. Books are powerful. So, Srila Prabhupada had this as a strategy. He knew historically that it worked. His spiritual master also told him that it would work and that he wanted him to do it. So Prabhupada said, print as many books in as many languages and distribute throughout the whole world. As many books in as many languages. Very important to note this. And distribute throughout the world. He also added that by doing that, the Christian conscious movement would automatically increase. He made this statement in, in Los Angeles. And he had called all the GBCs from all over the world to come there to Los Angeles. He wasn't pleased at the time with the pace in which the books were being produced. It's a long history and it's all coming out of my book. But Prabhupada was pushing for book distribution from the moment that he stepped on the US soil. He wanted the devotees to buy a building primarily because he wanted a printing press. And he started his first press in Boston and began producing books there. And then later they started printing in Japan. And Prabhupada had come to Los Angeles, this was years later after the first press was done, and the BBT was printing books as quickly as they could and they were getting the most modern equipment and they got up to the pace where they could produce two books a month. This Prabhupada was working constantly in translating his books and the, he had a team that traveled with him just so that the books could be produced. There were artists, there were Sanskritists, there were editors. And they were all working together all the time and traveling uh, with Prabhupada, Pradumna and others just so they could be on the spot to help with this. Then Prabhupada came to Los Angeles and there's a famous morning walk at, at Venice Beach. Prabhupada wanted the Chaitanya Charitamrita to come out. The heads of the BBT at that time, Radhabala Prabhu and Rameshwar Prabhu said, we can we, Prabhupada, they were very excited to tell him we can produce two books a month now. There were 17 books in arrears and Prabhupada said, I want all 17 books in two months. <laughs> Walking on the beach, all the GBC. He had called all the GBC there just to say this. Rameshwar at the time very sincerely said what was actually true. He said, Prabhupada, that's impossible. That was true. Prabhupada turned around and he said, impossible is a word in a fool's dictionary only. And Rameshwar told me this, that as soon as Prabhupada told him that, he realized, I have to do this. 
he got the order directly and not only that he told me that all his other god brothers in the GBC were standing there looking at him thinking I'm glad I'm not you right now <laughs> Rameshwar and Radhabalba dropped back from the morning walk Prophet went ahead with the other devotees and Rameshwar said his head was spinning and he looked up and he saw that the universe was moving there were planets he realized he's standing on a planet that's floating and he realized that that's being suspended in air by the Supreme Personality of Godhead and then he realized Prabhupada is the representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead then he realized how could it be impossible I have to try for it and the minute he accepted it the minute he took it to heart and said no matter what happens I have to do this that's when the ideas started to come and he said he and Radha Balaba walking down the beach were speed talking they were talking so fast back and forth to one another that people walking by might have thought that they, they were crazy they were getting so many ideas about how they could do it they caught up to Prabhupada and they began to tell him all their ideas and they asked for several concessions from Prabhupada that had to do with the artwork because the artwork took a long time to complete so they needed more artists they needed to be able to put the artwork through and so forth the end result was the entire community in Los Angeles turned its attention toward printing these 17 books in two months all facilities in the whole temple were commandeered actually volunteered by the temple president and the whole community and people flew in from all over the world to help and in two months they produced 17 books halfway through the marathon they had half of the books and none of the devotees knew it but they lined them up on the altar before Mangalartik and when the when the doors opened and they saw these beautiful golden Sri Chaitanya Charitamritas never seen before by anyone on the altar Rameshwar told me it was the most ecstatic Mangalartik in the history of ISKCON and tears were pouring from the eyes of the devotees working for Krishna Anushilanam means cultivating by working hard this is Sankirtan it includes printing books it includes getting them shipped it includes the accounting and yes it includes taking them out and putting them in the hands of people and this was Prabhupada's life and soul this is what he imbibed from his spiritual master and this is what all great acharyas in our line have done they've given contribution of literature starting with Lord Brahma if you look at his picture on the Sri uh, Brahma Samhita you'll see is holding a book in his hand we are the Sampradaya of the book there are other organizations that know about this watchtower is the Jehovah's Witness they're doing way bigger than we are so we think in India we're doing big because we're, we're organized to some degree and we're doing quite a few more books than all the other places in the world but compared to the watchtower organization the Jehovah's Witness we're doing tiny amounts they've organized themselves to do their books all over the world in so many different languages and millions and millions of books going out every month we're not going to let them beat us are we no Vaisheshika no, Das we're not Holy Bible goes out from the Gideons they're organized they're putting them in millions of places all over the world as we speak now in, in many many different languages Time magazine as compared to the Back to Godhead magazine their circulation is a lot bigger three million Prabhupada was thinking in these numbers and much bigger so when I was at the SGGS yes uh, last year there was a or was this year earlier this year there was an opportunity for everyone to to say wh where we thought there was room for improvement in ISKCON or, or the GBC or the BBT and my point was we're thinking too small we have to think much bigger when it comes to book distribution much much bigger and as we do as we commit to doing much much bigger book distribution and we follow the four laws of book distribution which I'm going to show you in just a minute we'll we'll be able to make incremental improvements and increase book distribution unlimitedly so where does the empowerment come from how is this all going to happen first of all Prophet writes in the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam that the direct order of the Lord is a manifestation of his internal potency and it is this particular energy that is the means of seeing the Lord face to face this is so powerful this order this request that Prabhupada made it is pregnant with the potency 
to be able to fulfill it. And Prabhupada says, has given this request. So kindly help me. Everyone read this out loud. So this is an open order. Just as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave an open order and he said, everyone, you become a guru devotee and you try to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. This is practically our application of this. Prabhupada said, kindly help me. This is my request. I want that you all vigorously try for this book distribution. So Krishna himself mentions in the Bhagavad Gita that those who engage in this kind of service, giving the message to others of the most dear to him, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has already given his open order. Yeah, he's deputized everybody. Everyone's deputized. All you have to do is volunteer and you'll get the highest benefit. So the beginning point, what is the foundation of book distribution? It's high sadhana. Book distribution is high sadhana. Everyone please say. We're doing it for our own self-purification. And as you mentioned, Mataji back here was asking about the challenges of going out to meet people and so forth. That's where you want to live, right in that zone where you're feeling challenged. How can I do this? You're praying to Krishna, please uh, help me. And that never goes away. Those who are engaged in this service, every morning they do intense sadhana because they know that without that, they won't have the wherewithal and the potency to present it to others. So you get this balance. You have on one side this desire to go out and distribute books. On the other side, you're trying to fortify yourself by your sadhana. And this is a very balanced life. Hearing and chanting and then going out and distributing. Rice is a very good food, right? Let's hear it for rice. You don't like rice. Let's hear it for rice. You hate rice. Let's hear it for rice. Do you like rice or not? Is rice a good food or not? I'm still not convinced. On a scale of 1 to 10, that's about a 1. Rice is good, yes? Yes. Okay. Dal is good, right? Yes. Now, rice and dal are good foods, but when you put them together, according to Jamuna's cookbook, the encyclopedic cookbook, you get 42% more nutrition. There's synergy in that, in the two things together. It's a perfect protein, rice and dal together. Book distribution on one hand, hearing and chanting on the other, strong sadhana. You put the two together, you have a perfect life. This is super sadhana. Because if you just hear and chant, you'll become insular. You'll only take it for yourself. But, and, and you become weak. You don't push yourself out of your comfort zone. But if you do book distribution and then you come back and you hear and chant, the, both of them will propel the other. And you get this super sadhana by mixing the two together. It's a very balanced life. You can live out your whole life here on planet Earth in, uh, in grand fashion by engaging this service. So we say it's a rapid way to make advancement in devotional service. Take it up. It doesn't mean you have to do huge. It just means you have to try. Do the best you can. Now here we come to the four laws of book distribution. But before I go into them, I'm going to take five reflections. And we have the microphone ready to go. So tell me one thing you heard. We don't want questions or, or another topic. Just one thing that you heard so far that we've mentioned that's stuck in your mind. On your mark, get set, go. Raise your hands. Here's one. And then, okay. Hare Krishna. The first thing that stuck to my mind was book distribution is fun and easy. That eased me 50%. What was the second part? That relaxed me 50%. Oh, okay, good. Very good. Book distribution is fun and easy. Yes. That organized thoughts are so powerful that all the evolutions are created because of the books. This is a very powerful point. Yes. Organized thoughts, books are powerful. They actually have their effect. Thank you. What to speak when they're spiritual books? Yes, a point. You should be uncomfortable when you are in comfortable zone. Yes. So this stuck in my mind. Yes, you should feel comfort when you're in your discomfort zone and comfortable. <laughs> yes, exactly. Thank you. 
Rice and dal. Rice and dal, <laughs> yes. Book, book distribution plus hearing and chanting. That is very Super important. Sadhana. Super, Super sadhana. Super sadhana, yes. Other points? Yes. Preaching means giving. Preaching means giving, yes. We're giving the gift. That's what sampradaya means. It means that we're passing on the gifts. It's good work if you can get it, right? To have a life of giving, yes. Book distribution means high sadhana. It means high sadhana. That's what it is. It's a high sadhana. It's the work of the Madhyamadi Kari. Madhyamadi Kari's are very advanced devotees. And all of you who are managers, would you rather have a temple full of Kanishta Adhikaris or Madhyama Adhikaris? Let me answer for you because I'm also a temple manager. You want Madhyama Adhikaris. Because Kanishta Adhikaris sit around and argue with one another and make excuses. And Kanish and Madhyama Adhikaris think all day long how can they expand the Sankirtan movement more and more. And they have compassion in your hearts. And when you, when you train your congregation how to go out and distribute books and show mercy and give, they evolve into Madhyama Adhikaris. They gain more capacity. And that's the strength of our movement. Our strength of our movement is not buildings. It, it, it's not money. It's the internal strength of the devotees who have learned how to give Krishna consciousness and how to hear and chant in a sustained way over a lifetime. One more. Chant Hare Krishna and teach others. There's two parts to the movement, right? How simple can it get? Two parts. Thank you very much. Yes. When you're given an impossible task, you have to pray over and over again. So going out every day for books, with books, is difficult. The mind dribbles. So you have yes. to pray over and over again. Absolutely. You know, I go door to door a lot. I love going door to door. And when I knock on the door, immediately, and every time, I'm th there's this interim where I'm thinking, what's going to happen now? Who's going to open the door? What's going to jump out? <laughs> And I was like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. And I realized all day long, living in that zone, where you're staying on that edge, like what is going to happen now? You have to just call out to Krishna. Okay, now we're going to move on to the four laws of book distribution. Are you ready? I'm not convinced. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, here we go. Don't break the laws. Follow these laws and I guarantee you, you will have success in your book distribution. Phenomenal success if you follow all four laws. The first law is, you say them all together. Please read them out loud. Number two. Number three. Number four. Okay, so the first law of book distribution is your sadhana must be strong. We are distributing the overflow of what we're getting ourselves. Strong sadhana means strict, serious and sincere. It means when you chant japa, you're there and nowhere else. Nam bina kichu nahiko ora chota bhuvana maje. Bhakti Thakur says, there's nothing else to be had in the 14 worlds except for the holy name. And you should be on a schedule to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. If you see somebody walking around with with a bead bag and they don't have counter beads, what do you think? Eh, they're entry level, they're not really that into it, they're just kind of showing off the bead bag. You see some counter beads on the beads, it means somebody's in the game, right? Same thing, we have Prabhupada's books. If you don't have, if one doesn't have a goal to finish the Bhagavatam within a given period of time, I don't care what type, period of time that is, and all other Prabhupada's books on a regular basis, if you don't have a goal written on paper, it's the same as walking around with a bead bag and no counter beads. I'm just saying. So you have to be strict, serious, sincere. You really have to dig in because Maya will come at you from every direction, internally and externally, and you have to be dead serious about your sadhana all the way through your life in every phase and especially if you want to go out on the battlefield you have to fortify yourself intensely through sadhana every day and fortunately it's a beautiful process and one can easily do it because Prabhupada set it up so that, so that we have everything that we need for very very powerful sadhana you have to get a taste it's your responsibility to get a taste otherwise it's niyamagraha don't do things and just go through the motions make sure that you get a taste and how do you do that you have to give your full attention that's your job everything else will be supplied by krishna 
distribute the overflow. When you get an experience when you're chanting japa that you don't want to be anywhere else and that you don't even want to even stop, that is the kind of drop of taste through which you can meet people anywhere at any time and explain to them why they should take a book. Because it's not an intellectual process, it comes from the heart. And if you are feeling happy, if you're feeling satisfied by chanting and enlivened, invigorated even, then when you go out, people will see it in your countenance. They'll look in your face before you even show them the book and say, what do you got? I'll take it. That's how you sell books. It's through the strong sadhana. It's the overflow. And if you get one drop of this from chanting and hearing, then you have enough to flood the whole world. Here's an example of strong sadhana. Bhagavad Gita, you should read one chapter a day. At least the Sanskrit verses or the English verses or the Sanskrit and the English. We have an organization called CHAD. How many of you are members? Any members in here of CHAD? One? Okay, well you can all join when you like. All you have to do to join CHAD is agree to chant at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day without fail. How long does that take? Let's ask our one CHAD member at the back. How long does it take you, Sri Ram Prabhu? Five minutes. Five minutes a day. How many minutes, how many hours in a day do we have every day? 24, how many minutes is that? Do you ever waste five minutes out of your 24 hours? Well, stop it. <laughs> Chant Bhagavad Gita every day, one chapter. One chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day, you'll develop a relationship. If you're going to go out and sell Bhagavad Gita, you have a responsibility to read at least one chapter a day. At least the verses. And if you do, there are multiple benedictions. Just an example. There are many letters and... Uh, statements that Prabhupada gave about reading one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. There's, we have this organization, CHAD, it's called Chapter a Day. You can be a card-carrying member. Just agree today to chant your one chapter a day and your whole life will change for the, for the better. What's that? Well, to, to be an official member of CHAD, all you need to do is read at least the Sanskrit verses, just the verses in English, or whatever your local language is, or English or Sanskrit. Right? Urva mula madasha kam ashvatam prahuravya yam chadam siyasi paradani yastam veda saveda vid adashurvam prashritas tasyashaka guna. So you go on, that will take you five minutes. Do the verse, at least do that. Then your mind will get interested in doing other things too, going deeply within the purports. This is another program we highly recommend for sadhana. It's called Be a Sage Page by Page. We have a chart that tells you how many, how many pages of every one of Prabhupada's books you have to read each day in order to complete it within a given amount of time. For instance, did you know that if you read just eight pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam every day, you will complete the entire 12 cantos within five years? Did you know that? Did you know that if you read 41 pages of Srimad Bhagavatam a day, you will complete the entire 12 candles of Srimad Bhagavatam in one year? Were you aware of that? I'll give you a chart and you can take it with you and you can look at each one of Prabhupada's books. You should have a schedule to complete the Srimad Bhagavatam within a given amount of time. You're going to be five years older and five years anyway, you might as well complete the Bhagavatam. That's how you go back to Godhead. This is strong, strict, serious, and sincere sadhana. And number two is, you must get books. And for this one, we need you to be a little military. In the military, when someone asks you to do something, you say, Sir, yes, sir. And now when you come to number two, I want you to say, yes. That wasn't military. That was, you'd be kicked out of the military. Number two is, I want you to say it so loud that people get around the compound here and say, what's yeah! going on? <laughs> there you go. Like that, but one, two, all together. One, two, three. Yeah! That's military. And that's what you got to do is to follow number two because we've researched. We go, went to all the major universities and we hired scientists and we found out something very interesting. That is, you cannot distribute books that you do not have. 
It's practically one of the laws of thermodynamics. People talk about book distribution. They say, where's your books? I don't have any. It's like, get out of here. <laughs> Just get out of here. You need to have your books. Get your books, carry them with you. If you go to the store and you take a book with you, it changes your entire experience. You bring it with you and you're thinking the whole time, Krishna, how am I going to do this? Where, and when, you, when I walk through the airport, when I go to Delhi airport, every person gets a book on my way out. And is it a different experience than if I just traipse through the airport and, you know, keep thinking like, when's this flight going to leave and everything like that? So you should give out books wherever you go and make sure you're stocked up with all the different languages. There's all different languages that you can get nowadays in India. We have Telugu. We have, what do you have? The Hindi. Hindi. Gujarati. Gujarati. Punjabi. Don't be caught without these the, the books that you need to distribute to the various people. Get books. It's a miracle that we have them. 500 years ago when Rupa Goswami was writing books, they had to write it on a palm leaf with a stylus and then put it in the sun and wait till it changes colors. We don't have to do that anymore. We have stacks of books. Take advantage. It's one of the, one of the redeeming qualities of Kali Yuga is that you can get these books that came from the spiritual world and make sure that they're available to everybody. Here's Vietnamese books. I'm sitting at a mall. I was walking around a Vietnamese mall. Sat down with the folks there. And when I showed them the book in their language, they th thought I, I came in from another planet. That was the you know, best thing they ever met. They couldn't believe it. I was their best friend, sitting right there at Starbucks Coffee. Each one of them bought a book. Here's a Muslim mullah I met at a marketplace. I said, Salam Alaikum, Alaikum Salam, Madhava Kifelak, Alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar. And he came over and he goes, you believe in Allah? I said, yes. And he said, you pray every day? I said, 16 times. And he gave me a big hug. <laughs> and then if you'll notice this book here, that's book in his own language. He said, he's from Afghanistan. And he took this book in Farsi. And right now, think of it, that book, he was on his way home. That book's sitting somewhere in Afghanistan. There's a big war going on there. It's been going on for years. But these books, when they trickle in, one book can bring down an empire. There's nothing better going on. There's no other agenda better than what's in these books. And when they sneak across borders, which they do, and they get into these other countries, they create havoc. They create havoc. It brought down the, the wall in Europe. The books were smuggled in, and now there's tens of thousands of devotees all over Russia, former Soviet Union. You have to get books and make them available to people. Number three is the one we always say twice. You don't have to say it military, but you have to say it twice. Are you ready? The more you show, the more you... One more time. That's because this principle is universal. It's in every language you'll, you'll hear this. What's it in Hindi? There you go. See, it's in Hindi. It's also in Japanese. It's also in Mandarin. It's also in, in Tagalog. It's in every language of the world because it's a fact. And I'll tell you why it's a fact. Because little jiva, the little jiva soul, is marginal. Marginal means open to suggestion. Little jiva is wandering. Brahmanda Brahmate Kon Bhagavan Jiva. He's wandering around, or Prabhupada sometimes says loitering in the material world. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know what to do next. That's why people put up big signs along the freeway and said, drink Coca-Cola. Is that a good idea, drink Coca-Cola? It's a bad idea. And every cell in the person's body is saying, don't drink Coca-Cola. And then he sees the sign. Little Jeeva's walking, driving by, so he sees the sign, and Coca-Cola says, pour out the happiness. That's their advertising. So Little Jeeva goes, huh, okay. I'll get some Coca-Cola. And every cell in the body's going, don't you do it. Don't you put that in here. And Little Jeeva goes, I saw it on the sign. I'm drinking it. And he drinks down the Coca-Cola, and there it goes. Now, if you show the Bhagavatam, people will take it. And super soul within the heart of that person say, take it. You're doing the right thing now. Every cell in their body is start to become spiritualized just by looking at the Bhagavatam. If you show it, the jivas will come and take it. You can't let people show Coca-Cola all over the world and not show the Bhagavatam, not show the Bhagavad Gita. And you can innovate in any way you like, but the fact is that the more you show these books, the more you display them, people will come. These two young girls, 
We just set up a table and I just took a picture of them. They just walked up because the table was there. They started browsing all the books and they ended up taking some home. They never expected to do that. They didn't come shopping, but because the table was there, they took it. Here's a table somewhere in India. It's in Salem? Where? Melor. This is in Belor. Belor Tamil, Tamil Nadu. Let's hear it for Belor Tamil, Tamil Nadu devotees. Give me a hand. There you go. Look at that table. It's beautiful. Look, here's a policeman taking a book. Why did he take it? Because it was out there. It was visible. That's as simple as it gets. Here's a devotee. She's showing books to everyone walking by. Why are they taking them? Because she's showing them. The more you show, the more you sell. That is a fact. You can take that to the bank. And if, if you go to events where people are congregating and you show the books, here's some of the devotees at our local temple right this weekend. This last weekend they were at this pumpkin, pumpkin festival. People are going there. It's autumn is coming. They got nothing better to do. Go look at a bunch of pumpkins. And now they find the books are the same color. So they take those. <laughs> here's Diwali events. Look, at, you just show the books. People will come over and take them. And another one is Shastra Don, making the books available in libraries, prisons, hospitals, all over the world, just by placing the books. Here's another innovation that goes under, the more you show, the more you sell. This is our smart box. In our hometown, um, where my temple is, in Silicon Valley, we have 150 of these book, of little boxes set all over the town. If anybody likes to distribute books while you're doing something else, like, for instance, sleeping, or traveling in the Dom and the books are going out by themselves, this is for you. Because all you have to go is go and put up this display and people come in, they take the books, they put the money in the box and they go away. Here's Srivast Pandit, just set up his little table on the avenue and all day long people come over to see the books because the more you show, the more you sell. Now when it comes to showing, if you show the full sets of Bhagavatams, here who, anybody in this room sell any sets of Bhagavatams lately? One, two, three. Very good. Any of you thinking about selling sets of Bhagavatams? Yeah. Here's the answer how to sell them. Get some and start showing them. I was with Vijay Prabhu. You know Vijay? Famous book distributor and the Sankirtan minister. I was working with him one year at Rathiatra in Los Angeles. And he, there was a set of Bhagavatams, full set right there, it's there on the beach. And he, people would come over and he would say, do you have the Bhagavad Gita? And if they say yes, then they, he'd, he'd say, then you need the Bhagavatam. Kept pointing to it over and over again. And over and over again, people say, no thanks, and they'd walk away. And I was watching Vijay Prabhu do that and I was thinking, ah, how's he gonna sell a full set of Bhagavatams here at the beach? And then I got busy over on the other side of the booth. I was talking to someone for a few minutes. I turned around and I came back. There was an empty space where the Bhagavatams were just a few minutes before. I said, Vijay, where's the Bhagavatams? He goes, I just sold them. And that lesson went deep in my mind. All he was doing over and over again, say, here, take a look at this. Here, why don't you take the Bhagavatams? Here, try it. Everyone do this. Here, take a set of Bhagavatams. Come on, put your hand up. Take a set of Bhagavatams. Here, take a set of Bhagavatams. I think someone's going to take one in here if I keep doing it. Take a set of Bhagavatam. It's right over there. Look, take a set of Bhagavatams. In Washington, D.C., at a Sunday program, we set up a table like that and decorated it, and we did a little artic right before the Sunday lecture. I gave a lecture. I talked a little bit about Maharaj Parikshit, Shukadev Goswami, the urgency, the seven days. We all have seven days to live, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And, and I just told everyone how beautiful these books were and I explained to them how they contained seeds from the spiritual world and that Srila Prabhupada had risked everything to come to America with these books. And then we said, who wants one? 45 people bought sets of Bhagavatams that day. 45 people. I recorded that lecture. It's on the website, fanthespark.com. You can go there under the book distribution section and you can actually listen to the lecture. People were clamoring. They were saying, why? Because I showed them. That's it. I just showed them. 
How many of those would I have sold if I didn't show them? Let's take a quiz. Any mathematicians in here? Get your calculator out. How many would I have sold if I didn't show them? Approximately. Approximately zero. <laughs> so you have to show them. The Prabhupada said that every respectable gentleman should have a set of Bhagavatams and the the, the most famous American salesman, Tom, Tom Hopkins, once said, whatever you sell, you should sell in bunches like bananas. Everyone say that. Sell in bunches like bananas. So these come in, in bunches, these books. So instead of just selling one book or one magazine, bring out everything. Bring out all the books. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Here we walked into this house. People, we, we went in here and... They had to get that whole shelf there now is a Bhagavatam. On there, there were hair brushes and there was all kinds of old DVDs and junk. They said, we don't have any room. We said, here, we'll help you move all this stuff out of here. <laughs> That's what happens when the Bhagavatam moves in. All the other stuff goes out. That's how it works. Anarta's out the door. But we showed them and they took it. Here's a Muslim man and he just bought a a full set of Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita from Shraddha Devi Das. He goes door to door selling Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Ran into a Muslim and said, yeah, I'll take it. That's Lord Chaitanya's program. So, how to distribute full sets of Srimad Bhagavatam? Here's the tiny URL. You can look on there. And here's another bunches like bananas. We put together all the books that are in print, plus a Madanga, plus pictures, plus lectures, everything. We even give the bookshelf. The bookshelf, we buy it from Ikea. And so when someone, we offer this, $1,008 for everything all at once. And do you think it works? Yeah, it works. But now you have to tell me why it works. There you go. Come on, though. Correct. So here it is. When people get the full set of Prabhupada's Bhagavatams and everything else in one place, their house becomes a temple. Their house becomes a temple. They change. They become devotees, steady. And it's not selling these, it's not about the money because anybody can afford this on the planet today practically, anybody. What it's about, the decision they have to make is when they move those books in their house, they're making a statement. It's a fact. Social scientists say that what you keep in your house tells who you are. And people know that. It's a, this is who we are. And when you move all these books in and your friends come in and look and see what all these books, you have to admit, I'm a Hare Krishna. That's just the way it is. All of these. Now, next thing, Motel Gita. We're going around and placing uh, Bhagavad Gita's in motels. And people are reading them everywhere. Right next to the Holy Bible. Number four law is? That's correct. Because you can do a little bit of book distribution here and there if you just do it randomly and you don't think about it very much. A lot of them sitting down. And you don't think about it very much. But if you organize, then you can incrementally increase and do it unlimited book distribution. And that's what we're looking for is to expand unlimitedly. Expand what? Yes, and that can be done through organization. Incremental improvements brings one to the position of unlimited advancement. Prabhupada thought about the Krishna Consciousness Movement and organized it very meticulously before he came to America. He gave seven purposes of ISKCON. Here's the seventh, by the way. The seventh is that to achieve the aforementioned purposes, he would publish and distribute periodicals, magazines, books, and other writings. That's the way in which he said he would achieve the others. So organization means it starts with your calendar. One thing that happens in ISKCON communities all over the world is you get multiple programs going on at the same time. True? Yeah. It's a nice problem to have, but it, for, for book distribution, you have to plan ahead. And you have to stake your, your claim on the calendar about a year ahead of time. And, and chalk out the times when you're going to take your community out to distribute books. Another aspect of organization is that you have to set goals. 
if you have a goal, then your mind will immediately start to think how to achieve it. And I'll just give you an example of how, this, how well this works. In America, several years ago, we got together, the, the, the North American GBC and Temple Presidents, and we decided to work as one team. One continent, one team. And we made a goal to, to increase by 20% the next year. And all the devotees agreed to do their part, to do that. And we worked together. And by impl implementing the four laws of book distribution and this goal setting, we've been on a steady rise. We achieved 28%, and then 25%, and then we set goals of 10% the last two years. And we've smashed each one of them. And as soon as the devotees started, got it in their minds to, to have a goal, then the energy started to move. Organize, make sure that the books are kept in meticulous care. In the book room in Toronto, Canada, they don't allow shoes. And I see them in the, in the morning, they do an artic to the books before the devotees come in. They take it very seriously, it's like the Pujari room in there, taking care of their books. You use all the latest technology, for instance, in our team in Silicon Valley, we use WhatsApp. And all the devotees keep in touch with each other simultaneously through WhatsApp. There's many, many ways you can use technologies to stay organized. Use everything to do that. There's a Sankirtan newsletter. It was actually ratified by Srila Prabhupada. It's something that he would read before he would read all his other mail. If you are distributing any books at all, report your scores. Because just by doing that, it brings your attention and everyone else's attention in your community to book distribution. So now I'm going to have a little quiz. What are the four laws of book distribution? Number one. Your sadhana must be strong. Do you agree with that? Okay. Number two. Let me see. Are you ready for number two? Number two. Okay, let me... Number two. They can't hear you out there. Number two. That's military. Good. Number three is the one we always say twice. And number four? Must organize. See, these are the four laws of book distribution. And if you follow these four laws, and there are various details to how to do that, you are guaranteed to have success in your individual book distribution and your community-wide book distribution. I guarantee it, or your money back from this seminar. Um, now, we'll take some reflections, but before I do, I would like to ask Sri Ram Prabhu how much time we have left. How much time I have left. Finished? 15 minutes. Let's take some reflections, what do you say? Go ahead. Reflection means anything you heard that's stuck in your mind from this next section. Mataji. I love the mantra, be a sage page by page. Reading eight pages a day of Srimad Bhagavatam will be able to complete all the 12 cantos in five years. That's a very good way. You have given me that enlightenment today. I will start immediately. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I, I promised you a chart, and I brought charts with me that I'll give in one of the sessions so you can take it home and look at it. What else? Yes. The three S that you offered about sadhana, strict, serious, and sincere. Yes, strict, serious, and sincere. I wrote a chapter in my book that's coming out at the, at the Mayapur festival this year about book distribution, and I wrote a, a whole chapter about what is strong sadhana. And just in writing it, I got really enlivened to make my sadhana better. The more you study sadhana and get into what it is and how to do it better, the, the more you'll be eager to do it. And the more you have strong sadhana, the more you will be productive in the rest of your life, and especially in book distribution. Yes. The enthusiasm which overflows when we are chanting, that is what we give out. That's right. It comes out through your countenance. People see it. And it comes out in your steady determination also. When you have that, then you'll be steadily determined if, no matter what other obstacles come up in your life. Yes. I would like to complete Bhagavatam in one year. Yes. What do you want, what do you want this to devotee 
it would like to complete the whole Srimad Bhagavatam in one year. It is a life-changing experience, actually. This is the way you actually develop a love for Prabhupada's books, and you intensively hear from them. So my good friend, very close friend, His Holiness Keshav Bharti Maharaj, recently took up the challenge uh, last year. And he said, I'll read the whole Bhagavatam in one year, 41 pages a day. And he kept that vow. And first of all, any time I was around him, it was a very pleasant experience because anyone who's reading 41 pages of Bhagavatam a day is putting out some really nice vibrations. And they also, you can, that's all they talk about. It's like, yeah, I just read this, I just read that. And that's what's going through their mind. And when he finished those 41 pages, actually he finished a, a few days early, he said it was the most life-changing, it was a life-changing experience in Christian consciousness. So you don't have to be the same next year as you are this year. You can decide to totally redo your devotional service, and this is the one, one of the ways you can do it. Read the whole Bhagavatam in one year, or five years, whatever you like. Just get on the schedule. Don't be the one walking around with a bead bag with no counter beads. <laughs> okay, yes. Yes. Uh, this more you show, more you sell. So I, I had this, I, I knew this law because I attended your seminar in Vrindavan a few years back. So I remember this law. And on this base, I, uh, on Sunday I distributed one bhag set of Bhagavatam. And the, you distributed 68 uh, sets of Bhagavatam in, after that lecture. 45. So uh, that's really wonderful and it, it indicates that this law works. Yes. Thank you very much. He sold a set of Bhagavatams. Give him a hand. Thunderous stuff. Thunderous. That's not thunderous. <laughs> Selling a set of Bhagavatams deserves a thunderous applause. All right? From now on, that's the rule. Okay, go ahead. Uh, you were saying that every day at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita you have to read. But it's an advantage that there's a lot of multiple benedictions. Like not only you will be prepared, but you'll get a lot of other opportunities multiple yes. in what you do. Bhag Bhagavad Gita is Krishna speaking directly. We need that. Don't leave the house without reading one chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Don't be, don't be insane. Don't try to walk out in a Kali Yuga without <laughs> reading one chapter of Bhagavad Gita. That's the definition of insanity. Okay. Always sell your bunches like bananas. Yes, sell in bunches like bananas. And another is basically I liked the uh, library which you made it. So that is very yeah. beautiful. So and no can, one can yeah. stop you from doing that. The books are available. You get them together, you bunch them together in bananas and you show them and people will take them. I promise you they'll take you. Yes. And uh, coming to the point of organization, you know, uh, myself and Sibal Prabhu, we are a very good, you know, combination in sense he procures the orders and he doesn't have time to deliver. And what I do is, I organize from the temple, Sri Sri Radha Gobinath, Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohanji temple from Kargar, where I stay at New Bombay. It's about 4-5 kilometers away. So we keep in touch with different temples. Suppose the books are not here at X temple, then Y temple comes to our rescue. The point I would like to make here is, once you are focused and very well organized book table makes a lot of huge difference. As we do, you know, our book tables in one of the events is about 60 foot long and we decorate it so nicely, we spend about almost 30,000 rupees for decorating. And people come there dancing, you know, to the tune of uh, Prahlad Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. You know, people are, you know, including the old people, they come dancing to the uh, table and they take the books, whether it's a child or, and we make some live programs for small children also making a stage and all those things in front of the Lord Balaji temple at Nirul. So it makes a huge difference. So he procures the orders without showing the books and immediately everything is delivered to their places within less than 24 hours. Srimad Bhagavatam says. And the cost, cost of delivery is, uh, you know, borne by us, not by them. Irrespective of the place in Bombay. Oh, very good. Yeah. Make sure, huh? How much time do we have now? Five minutes? <laughs>